I'm now joined by Brayton Laster, Arca Menard Series driver. Brayton, it's great to see you. Thank you for being on the show. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's always a, it's always a joy kind of, you know, past couple years watching on YouTube and now I actually get to come on and actually talk to you. So it's pretty exciting. That's awesome. But well, before we get started, because I know you got some exciting racing stuff coming up, beginning with Daytona here in just a couple of days. Um, but first off, you know, when I first kind of found out who you were and I followed you on Twitter, I noticed your Twitter handle was at the the one pizza man and i wondered like and, and you got the pizza bread uh bed sheets behind you so where did the pizza man um i don't know nickname branding where did that come from uh it's 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 i'm gonna make a long story short story here but growing up like in middle school i was always like, like the nerdy like chubby kid that sat in the corner and played his pokemon cards and pizza was my thing you know i i loved pizza like i'd like bring my own lunch to school every day and be like frozen pizza that could be the like, cold pizza i'd like oh. go and heat it up and uh so i was always like no one's like the, the pizza kid and then at the track, I'd always go to the concession stand, and my dad would give me you know, 10, 15 bucks. Like, all right, kiddo, here, go get you something to eat, get me something to eat. And I'd get myself a slice of pizza. And so around the track and around school, I was kind of known as a pizza kid growing up. And it started out with shoes. Uh, my mom found these, like, custom Nikes online, and I got like, these custom Nike shoes that looked like pepperoni pizza. And that just was, like, the, that, that was a catalyst for everything <laughs> and since then i've had pants i've had uh, more shoes i've had you know underwear socks um t-shirts ties hats i i, I got a yeah I, I, got, I got the collection going oh on my here. gosh i've got and what i'm mainly known for now is uh the pizza helmet as you can see here that um, that's insane so i actually have two of those and uh, it, it different may, toppings or are they the same both pepperoni <laughs> uh yeah i'm, I'm the pepperoni guy I'm okay, pretty, okay i see playing pepperoni guy and so kind of going you know moving up through the ranks and racing i was like hey i really like pizza it'd be kind of neat to kind of make it like my identity you know mm -hmm. because it, everyone can relate to pizza really oh, you hate it really never eat it everyone has had an experience one way or another with pizza so it's real easy to kind of relate yourself to me. And it's, it's, a, it's a good conversation starter. You know, people look at drivers. They don't really know anything about the drivers. You take one look at me and I'm wearing some pizza half the time. Like, I, I like this kid. I'm going to go talk to this kid, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of, it, it started out as like, a joke kind of and like this, this is who i am unironically i'm like okay we can we can get saucy with this we can get serious ah, with it, you know? mm. so. i like it hey, i'm a i mean you're right pizza is a great conversation star i love pizza as well I, do you have a favorite like type like thin crust deep dish detroit style I, neapolitan I'm, I'm a, I, <laughs> I like all pizza for the most part but i'm, I'm, I'm i like a good thick crust i like a lot of sauce Ooh, so, okay, me too. So, I, I, I like, I like, I like, I like, I like a good crunchy crust, not not like a burnt crust, mm -hmm. but like like a, like a good crunchy. You can't be too doughy, sausage. no, for sure. No, yeah, yeah, like my favorite restaurant is a thin crust pizza place, uh, local here to where I live in Houston. It's my favorite restaurant in the whole wide world, but like nothing slaps quite as hard as a good Chicago style deep loaded with sauce i tried detroit style pizza for the first time a, a couple of years back where they put the sauce on top and i was a little concerned i, I almost walked out at first but yeah I, i'm glad i didn't because it was delicious so i'm with you you're you're quickly becoming one of my favorite drivers because i too as you said relate deeply to pizza um i'm sure we'll talk more pizza in a moment but uh i now want to talk about daytona because the arca race is coming up you ran the arca race at daytona last year if i'm not mistaken was that your day de arca debut Yes, yeah, so that whole story kind of, I don't want to say a Cinderella story, but it kind of is. I've been racing for 12, 13 years now. Mainly, I'm, I'm out of Indianapolis, which is a big open wheel area, mm -hmm. but I've never done anything open wheel. I've always wanted to go the NASCAR route. <laughs> and my dad has owned and worked on like short track cars since the 80s and 90s. And so I was kind of born into it. And when I was uh, seven or eight years old, I started running go-karts. And I ran at a, a track called the Indianapolis Speed Realm. And it's a flat, no banking. It's almost like negative banking. <laughs> uh, fifth mile. So, I mean, it's, it's a bull ring. And so I started running go-karts there. And then when I was 12 years old, I was racing that street stock, a street stock type class. We had a 1977 Ford Thunderbird. And me and my dad, we had it in our garage. And we'd roll out in the drive. And we'd work on it throughout the week. And you know, after war, after he'd get home from work, I'd get home from school. And uh, so I was racing against, you know, 30, 40, 50, even 60-year-old guys. I've been racing for 40 years. And that was kind of my first true stock car experience. And then when I was 15 or so, uh, I was running 
mainly figure eight stuff. Figure eight's a big deal up here in Indianapolis. Okay. We run like outlaw figure eight, like full blown late models. And uh you can imagine my mom's my mom wasn't uh too happy that I was out here running outlaw figure eight stuff. You know, her her fifteen year old son was, you know, shooting through a crossover going 80, 90 miles an hour. Mm, I can't imagine. And, uh, yeah, so we kind of made the move to dirt racing. That's where I'd been the past three or four years, was I'd been running super dirt late models across the Midwest. And we never really followed a track or a series for the most part. We just ran wherever we went for fun. And about December, I want to say December 23rd, uh, so last year, like 14 months ago, uh, my dad walked in my bedroom at 10 o'clock in the morning or so. I'm, I'm, I'm home from college. Uh, I was getting my engineering degree at the time. And I was on Christmas break. And I was sleeping in. And my dad wakes me up to get ready to go to work. And he's like, hey, son, we have the uh, Arc of Daytona test coming up. And every every January, Arc goes to Daytona for a two-day test, kind of like Precious and Thunder used to back in the day. And uh, he's like, Dude, why, why do you think about running it? I'm like, it'd be cool. I don't know anybody in Arca. He's like, I'm like, do you know anybody in Arca? He's like, I don't know anybody in Arca. And he's like, all right, well, let's see what he can find out. And I knew the team, Mullins Racing, Donna and uh, Big William Mullins from TikTok. That, that was it. I followed them on TikTok. That was it. I'd never talked to them. I commented on some stuff here and there. They interacted. They could, but they had no idea who I was. And I went to their Facebook page. And sure enough, they're like, hey, we're taking two cars down to the Daytona test. Uh, we're looking at some possible drivers. I'm, I'm going to get approval for ARCA to come and join us. So you'll shoot us an email. And the, the post was like three weeks old. And I'm like, oh, it's probably too late because the, yeah. like, the test is in two weeks. So I shot down that email uh, the night of the 23rd. And a Christmas morning, I came down with a contract uh, to practice. I'm like, Dad, sign here, sign here. We're going to Daytona, baby. And uh, we went, we practiced. I think we were like 15th or 16th on the speed charts. And it was it was the first time I'd been on an asphalt track bigger than a 3 mile. And uh, the first, yeah. And I've been on like half-mile dirt tracks. I've been to Florence, uh, mm-hmm. the, dirt, the Kentucky one, not the, not the asphalt Florence, which is a high bank half-mile. I've been some other high, uh, like, three eighths high bank dirt tracks, but not nothing high bank on asphalt. And you know, I ran asphalt for years. I've never really went to bigger tracks. And so we're like, it's going to be an experience. I'm not sure if I'm going to like it. I'm not sure if I'm going to get used to it. And, you know, I, I do a lot of eye racing. And so I went out there first lap. I'm like, all right, hammer down. Let's see if she sticks. And uh, like I said, we ended up 15th or 16th, I believe on the overall for the weekend. And uh, we went up to the Mullins after the weekend was over. Like, hey, what to take the race? You know, what what do we have to do to race? Yeah. And uh, obviously, this is a, a money a money game. You know, mm-hmm. so they they shot the number. So we basically went and called you know every sponsor we we you know worked with in the past and even new ones. And we're like, hey, we're giving you guys an opportunity to be on a, an actual race car at Daytona. And so in three and a half weeks time, basically, we we raised the, the money to go racing at Daytona. And uh, we, I started seventeenth because qual- the Arca did group qualifying mm-hmm. started 17th and my first rookie mistake uh and this is the first time i'd been in a race car with like an actual h pattern shifter because in dirt cars they don't use h uh-huh. patterns in years and uh first rookie mistake is i started in the fourth gear on the initial start <laughs> and uh i'm like man my revs look a little low and so i'm in fourth gear so i go from like 15th to 17th whatever it was to like 31st and like mm-hmm. 150 feet so I spent the next 75 laps playing catch up, playing catch up, playing catch up. And we had a shot at a top 10 with about five to go. Yeah. And even in the top five, maybe we were lucky. And uh, we had a late race caution. I was like real badly timed. And uh, we only had a one lap shootout. I ended up bringing home 13th, though, not nice scratch on it. Dodged, dodged some uh, some good wrecks there at the end and did what we had to do. It was, it was a great learning curve. And then we ran Talladega, and uh, I got my big one experience at Talladega. We, we got hooked and we got ramped at Talladega, yeah. but that, that that's the best part of it, you know. I, the, I got I got that experience. Seeing, though, the, the high banks, like, I mean, you know, you've seen banking on a dirt track, but, like, the first time, I, I don't know, I'm not a race car driver, obviously. It, it, clearly, race car drivers are, are a slightly different breed, so I just may not understand it. But, sure. like, I, I, how do you not get intimidated going into turn one at Daytona, even during a test, during a practice, let alone suddenly you're racing around 30 other cars, I mean, that just I, I wrap my help me wrap my head around. It sounds like you just kind of flying by the seat of your pants at that point. I'm I I was just kind of taken aback when we just drive when we got in Daytona because that was the first time I'd even been to the yeah. track. I I'd never even watched a NASCAR race in person because normally we're racing on weekends, you know. So I I've only been to the Indy 500 once, and I was actually after Daytona last year. I went last May, um, and that's time in High Bank. So we were driving around the track. 
and I actually fell asleep on the way down. I wake up and we're driving down the boulevard there and we're like right by turn four. I look over and just see the, the mountain of grass. I'm like, is that it? I'm like, that, that's <laughs> like, that's, that's huge. And we went around the back stretch. They have like the airport over there. There's like a cell phone lot. And we pull in the cell phone lot and I get out and you can just, I mean, it's from like one end way over here to the next and way over here. I'm like, yeah. this place, it's massive. I'm, I'm like, I, I can't believe I'm going to be out here. No, this is, yeah. this is kids dream come true and, and then a couple of days later you know we're driving through the tunnel that tunnel is just so historic you know they have all the murals in there and all mm-hmm. the paintings and i'm like this is so surreal and then actually going on track it that the, the track itself is such a historic place and the, oh, the, yeah. but being on the track is a completely different feel and i went out there like i said you know i used the eye race which obviously it doesn't prepare you for the banking it doesn't prepare you for Versus, you know get yeah. thrown in the corner yeah and it was a, it was a learning curve, and I came in after like a ten lap run, and like my hands were like shaking. I'm like, oh yeah. man! So yeah, it it was just a whole surreal experience. It's kind of trial like fire because you can't yeah. go out there and mess up, but you mess up, you're you're crashing and you crash at low speeds. It, it typically doesn't end well for you. Yeah, my goodness, that that is tough for someone like me to wrap my head around. But uh, I mean, I guess you're doing it again. You're doing it again here in a few days. Part two, take two, uh, you got a fun paint scheme with, uh, I know auto repair VIN stickers is on the hood. You got a bunch of other partners. Um, how did this deal come together and what are you looking forward to, uh, this weekend? At yeah. Daytona? So we, we have a kind of the mom and pop special scheme. We have a drive for humanity, auto repair VIN stickers and the auto recyclers are like the big three that have kind of helped out Edco and the circle city raceway too. It's, a, it's kind of one of my home tracks for dirt here in Indianapolis. Uh, we run there quite a bit. So it's, it's kind of a family effort. We have over 45 different individual companies that have wow. come on board one way or another and help us out. A lot of these are like mom and pop type companies that, you know, they're, they've are they been fans of racing. Some of these guys have been NASCAR fans for 50, 60, 70 years even. And they never thought they'd even have their name you know, near a race car. Now we've kind of... Kind of like I've been given a chance to go out here and you know, run Daytona. We're kind of giving them the chance to go out here and get their name on a real race car at Daytona. Absolutely. And uh, we partnered up with uh, Drive for Humanity too, which is a it's a nonprofit we uh, founded late last year. And I've always had kind of a soft spot for like the homeless and those in need. And everyone over the past five or six years, I've kind of gone out with you know, me and my dad or me and my mom. We you know, hand out gloves and like, socks and hand out food. And Indianapolis is, has a big like uh, a homeless problem. And no one really seems to take notice and want to do anything about it. And it's kind of, it's sad, you know, it, it's sad. And these people, sometimes they just, need, they just need a little help back up. They just, mm-hmm. they just need someone to reach their hand and I'll pick them back up. So we go out and, you know, we talk and then we just kind of chit chat with them. Because sometimes you know, they don't have anybody to talk to and they get lonely. Yeah, yeah. You know, we give them hand warmers, propane. Sometimes they have, you know, propane grills and, you know, like I said, clothing, food. It's anything they need, especially during the winter. And so we kind of said, hey, we can kind of make a nonprofit out of this and have other people help and contribute. And so we did a deal where anybody that would donate a minimum of a dollar that drive for humanity, uh, to get their name on the car. Yeah. And so we have a drive for humanity there on, on the, uh, car and we have over 200 individual names of people that contributed. We raised over, I think $1,500. So that's, that's equivalent to like 3000 ish pairs of socks for people or, you know, hats and however you want to divide it yeah. up. So we're, we're very excited about that. We've been helping out people, especially it's been cold over these past couple of weeks. It's been mm-hmm. like in the twenties and thirties up, up here in the Midwest. So we're real excited about that. And we're back with it with Mullins racing. Like I said, it's a bit of a Cinderella story. It's an unlikely yeah, story. It's crazy. So, I think it's super fascinating. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, it's an unusual story. You've heard, of, you've heard of people coming from dirt to NASCAR or from I racing the NASCAR and stuff, but this is uh, from TikTok to NASCAR, I guess. <laughs> TikTok so it, to it, emails to DMs to yeah. seeing a two and a half mile super speedway for the first time. <laughs> we're, we're sending it. So it, it's yeah. been a, a surreal journey. And thankfully, the Mullins trust me to to wield their, their beauty again. And here's here's the neat thing about Arca is a lot of these are like newer type, you know, Gen 5, Gen 6 cars. Mm-hmm. Some of them are like purpose built cars. And you have some museum pieces, I, I want to say. Yeah. Uh, my car is actually a early to mid 2000s Robert H racing car. It's wow. one that Dale Jarrett drove, I'm thinking like the 05 or 06 Talladega race. It was his Daytona backup. And I mean, it's a pretty solid piece. So we've kind of given this car a new life. And yeah. that car too has su- such history behind it. And so we're real excited about that. We w- went down, we tested uh, 
this past January. And on the first day of testing, I think I was third fast out of 45 drivers. And the uh, second day, we ended up being seventh quick overall out of like 63 drivers. So we got the speed. Uh, I don't say I don't want to say I'm a I'm a super speedway ace by any means, but I have a lot more experience going into the race than I did last year. Absolutely, yeah, so we're, we're we're feeling pretty good about it. That's exciting. Well, uh, I, I it's been awesome getting to talk to you, Brayton, learn a little bit more about your background and and your mindset going into this because, uh, yeah, year two Daytona high banks, uh, there's nothing quite like it, I imagine. Now, um, a lot of fans watching this, listening to this, maybe uh, learning about you for the first time. So uh, social media, I know you're on Twitter, but where are some of the best places for fans to to follow along uh, your, with your journey the rest of this year? Yeah, Twitter is a big one, at the one pizza man. I post a lot of stupid stuff that I probably shouldn't post on there. So <laughs> uh, TikTok too, I'm, I'm big on TikTok. Like I said, that's kind of where my story began. And I post a lot of GoPro footage from new, from dirt track, short track, go-kart stuff to, you know, the clips of you in the garage work at Daytona and Talladega. So I post all kinds of stuff there. And we, we do a lot of redneck stuff too for our dirt stuff. Like like we spray paint our motors, you know, so they look nice and <laughs> like goofy stuff like that. You normally wouldn't expect out of a dirt team or something like that. So that, that TikTok is at Brayton Last. Um, we have a Facebook page, and that's uh, I have a personal page, Brayton Laster. They can go and follow that, and see updates there. Or we also have like a like a uh, uh, business page, like the Brayton Laster Motorsports. Uh, you can check in for updates there. And, and uh, Drive for Humanity also has a uh, page. You can go and follow, see all the updates, see all the cool stuff we're doing there. And then uh, Instagram is at the one only the Pizza Man. So it's it, it, there's a lot of pizza. Hey, so, great. It's all full circle. I, I love it. Yeah, it, it just comes full circle. It's, like a pizza. Full circle. Yes. Full slide. <laughs> I love it. Well, Brayton, it's been great. Uh, like I said, getting to know you a little bit better. Thank you so much for being on the show and good luck this weekend at Daytona International Speedway, dude. Thank you so much. We're going to send it.